what we're looking at and understanding what is driving it, right? You're having a cut on your arm and you asking, how do I stop the pain? You could take a Tylenol right now, right? It would, it would stop the pain, but it doesn't deal with the pain or what causes the pain. And the problem with the Tylenol is it makes it seem like it's gone. It's okay. Everything's good, right? But maybe there's some side effects and things like that. But the, the way that we stop it is to deal with the why. What's going on? underneath the surface? What's driving me in the moment to head in that direction? You have to understand that it's not random. The reason to act out or the, the pull to act out is not a random thing. It comes from somewhere and it could be as simple as you being bored. It could be as simple as you sitting on the couch and being lonely. It could be any of these things. And that's something that you want to pay attention to and understand. But that takes self-awareness and that takes you taking the time to understand what it is that's going on underneath the surface, which may require you to have what? A dialogue to understand what is going on and where it's coming from. But the way that we stop, the way that we stop that pain ultimately is to deal with the infection in the wounds. So if you have a cut on your arm and it's infected, the way that we deal with that pain and that issue is to take those antibiotics. But we need to understand what's going on. So we identify the why is there's an infection in the wound in my arm. And the antibiotics is the dialogue that follows understanding that why. And the dialogue is actually part of the process of, of getting to that reason. Why am I feeling this way? What's going on with me? Where is this coming from? And really addressing that. Like a lot of times what happens is we have these urges, we have these temptations, and we feel them, but we aren't addressing them. Right? So sometimes we're able to willpower our way through them, and we go, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. No problems, no issues, right? But if we're really diving into it and going, okay, what's going on underneath the surface? Why am I feeling this way? Why is this coming up? And what can I do to change it? Then we're really dealing with the actual issue at hand. And inside that space is where the rewiring occurs. That's it. It's in that moment where you come to your addict self and go, okay, I'm feeling this way. I'm feeling like acting out. I'm feeling the urges. Why am I feeling that? Where is it coming from? And then really trying to decide what that is. There are probably moments where you can shove that off, right? Urge comes up, that thought comes in, no, I'm not going to do that. And then you move on. But you have to understand your mind's bringing that up for a reason. And if you're able to just to push it off from a willpower standpoint, what happens is your mind will just bring it up again because you haven't really enforced it, that that's not what we do anymore. So when our mind shows up and goes, hey, let's go act out. And we go, why do you want me to do that? So you're stressed. And you in your head may go, I've already had this conversation with my addict about stress and that we don't act out. But you have to have it again. And you sit down and go, no, we're not going to do that. So I understand why you want me to do that. It's not what I'm going to do. That's not what we're going to do. What else can we do besides acting out to help us deal with that stress? How about some self-care, right? So you're explaining it to your addict self that that doesn't work and we're not going to go down that road. That's the process we go down. And we reinforce that over and over and over again. And that's why it's important to have those conversations. Eventually, it starts to land. The mind starts to go, oh, okay, hmm, uh, that's not what we do. But you may have to have that conversation a lot. And that's why it's important to have that conversation. One, to identify why that's even coming up in the first place. Don't. It's not because you're horny or upset or, or I mean, maybe it could be because you're upset, but it's not just random. It's not just, oh, it just popped into my head. There's something driving that. And even if you can't get to the why, you can still have that conversation with your added self to explain them that that's not what we do. Regardless of whatever reason you want me to do that, that's not what we do. We don't do that. Right? You having this conversation to make sure, and it's that reinforcement right? That reinforcement. So you stop it by dealing with the root of it, right? That's the whole thing. Like you guys, I've had this conversation probably with y'all when each and every one of you, when you started the program or somewhere in there, where if we rip the stem of the leaves off a of, off of weed, it looks like it's gone. But until I rip it up by the root, it continues to be a problem. It will grow back eventually over and over and over again. Why, why is it coming up and what do I need to do to change it? And then we can instruct our mind. Remember, dialoguing is not about debating. 
negotiating, trying to change the addict's mind, trying to get rid of urges. It's none of that. It's to understand why you're wanting to do it and then explaining to your addict self why we're not going to do that. Right? It doesn't serve us. It doesn't help us. Not really. It actually causes more problems. It hurts me. We're not going down that road. And that's the approach you have to take. And then you're going to see the progress. In so basically what I would say is that the way that we stop the pull is to identify the why. And understanding we may have to have that conversation many, many times before our addict starts to get it and quit suggesting it when we come to that stressful point, okay?